what my dad taught me using garbage. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests, and YouTube audience. Today I'd like to talk to you about garbage. You see, because my dad taught me a very important lesson using garbage. Let's rewind the tape. It's 1997. And I know it's 1997. Excuse me, it's a Thursday night. And I know it's a Thursday night because in our neighborhood, in Mulcahy, Connecticut, Thursday night is garbage night. So we get home, and my dad tells me we need to bring the pails down. So do you think that 12-year-old James said with a smile, great, Dad, I'm, I'll be happy to help. Say no. <laughs> no. Of course not. Surely I spent more time complaining than I did actually doing the job. So I get the pails, and my goal is get down the driveway, put them off to the side wherever, and get the heck out of there as fast as possible. Get back to what I want to be doing. So in my house growing up, there was a technical term for that. It was called a hack job. And I specialized in hack jobs. So it's just what I did. I flew down the driveway, put the pails off to the side wherever, ran back up, grabbed some bags of trash. I was the oldest of five kids, so we sometimes had a lot of trash. <laughs> grabbed some bags, ran back down, put them off to the side next to the pails. We're out of there, right? Unacceptable. Dad is straightening out the pails taking the bags, putting them on, just so. Now mind you, these bags have already been pressed down with to get as much air as possible out of them, or as compact as they can be. Spun them, tied tightly. There are zero items of loose trash in these pails. And when we did boxes, there was no stomping them down to get them flat, no. That would be the hack job. He had the box cutter, cut them up. Bundle them up just so, bring them down. So you're starting to get the picture here? <laughs> He's driving me nuts. <laughs> the amount of time that we're spending to do this. So finally, we finish the job, we run back up the driveway. I say, Dad, 12 year old, thinking I'm real practical and a comedian. I said, Dad, you know that they're going to take that away tomorrow, right? You know that at some point tomorrow, They'll pick up that trash, it'll be gone, and we'll get to do it all over again next week. Who cares? Why do you care about what your driveway looks like between now and then? And he looked at me and he said something important. And I know it was important because I heard it over and over and over and over again from my parents growing up, both of my parents. He said, Jimmy, take pride in your work. Take pride in your work. And of course I'm thinking, that's only garbage. What was, he, what was he teaching me? Diligence. Excellence in the ordinary over time. Because if you'll apply a level of excellence to the most menial job, putting out the trash when it's gonna be gone the next morning, then surely when you're entrusted to do more, you will apply a level of excellence to that too. Now we're talking about one more story to finish this thought. We're gonna rewind the clock again, a couple more years. Matter of fact, we're gonna rewind about 2,000 more years because this one's a story from the New Testament. So Jesus is walking along the road and he comes upon a fig tree. And he sees this fig tree and there's leaves on it, but he, he realizes there's no figs, there's no fruit on the tree. So he curses the tree. And the next day, the disciples are walking along the same road they see that fig tree and it's withered up to its roots, dead. Whoa. So he's healing the sick, giving sight to the blind, do, doing all of these amazing things, and yet why, why did that happen to this fig tree? And so then I heard another detail about this story that perplexed me even more because if you read the passage, it says that the fig tree didn't have any figs on it because figs weren't in season. So what that means is that the average fig tree didn't have any fruit on it. 
the norm for a fig tree would be to not have any fruit on it. So again, I say, why, why this poor fig tree? What am I to learn from this? So I heard it explained by Pastor Mark Gorman, and he said it like this. If all you're doing is what comes naturally to you, then you're selling yourself short. If you're setting your level of excellence based upon what everybody else is doing, what's considered normal, you're selling yourself short. So if you can produce figs one day a year, then you can produce figs every day of the year. If you can take pride in your work one day a year, then you can take pride in your work every day a year, and there's no job that's too menial. Putting out the trash does not fall below the line by which we set our level of excellence. That's diligence. So the bottom line is I encourage you to set a level for your life based upon diligence. Excellence in the ordinary over time. And take pride in your work. Thanks, Dad. Mr. Tobin.